it is a uh, flea and tick season. If it's not happening right now, it's coming for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, fleas, ticks, heartworm, the whole thing, because this is a definite concern that most of us can appreciate. And just to, um, clarify a few things I just want to say, and then I'll stop talking so much. <laughs> Not everyone has the same type of issues with when it comes to fleas and ticks. So we're going to try and just cover different types of issues that people are dealing with, where it, whether it be flea allergies, or if we should bother with flea and tick medication, or if we should, you know, if there are times when we should go with the chemical stuff, um, the topical stuff, or if can we make our own with essential oils? Does diatomaceous earth work? There's just so much information out there about how to control fleas and ticks. And I find that whenever I'm involved in a conversation on social media, I walk away with more questions than I started with. So that being said, hi, Lori, how are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm good. It's not fully sneeziness. <laughs> I've never, I'm blessed never to have really experienced allergies, so. You're I can't so relate, lucky. I'm lucky. So, I know I'm lucky. And and they're worse at this. Like this is the worst time of year, and the worst time just in our human history for yeah. us to have for allergies us. because I can't go anywhere unless I have all of this buttoned up. Because if I go into mm -hmm. the door sneezing and coughing, oh my god. Just, People will be ready to lynch you. Be I know door. they would drag me out the store. Mm -hmm. Yep. It would just be horrible. So it's like, you know, it sucks because it's like you have to, you feel like, you know, you're going to sneeze or something and everyone, and it's like, I have allergies. I have hay fever. I promise. It's, it's, I'm, I'm safe. I'm safe. So, so um, when it comes to fleas and ticks, I mean, for our dogs, we have five dogs, one cat. We actually don't deal with fleas here, surprisingly, okay. and or ticks. And I try not to get you know, cocky about it because I know that this can change at any point in time. And um, we're just very lucky. But um, <clears throat> I've been using, I alternate between Wonder Side and Cedar Side for mm -hmm. my dogs. And I usually just spritz them down along with myself, probably once a week when we're going to be outside a lot. And yeah. I don't take my dogs to the woods to go hiking or anything like that. We're just pretty much on our property or on a walking trail. So that's pretty much what's worked for us. But I have heard from so many people that those type of, you know, quote unquote, natural treatments don't work. And can you explain why a wonder side or a cedar side wouldn't work for a dog? Um, number one, they are repellents. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to choke now. Um, they are repellents. And if they're not applied everywhere, uh, a flea or tick might jump on, you know, let's say you miss a leg. Um, some insects aren't going to care about them. Uh, there's a lot of variation in different bugs and where fleas are, where ticks are. Uh, how much exposure, you know, are you walking through a tick nest? Because you're, if you were encountering one or two, it might work. If you're in a densely populated area, bug-wise, it might not be enough. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the bugs are going to develop resistance as more of these products are used. So we're probably always going to have to be alternating and changing. Yeah. And when it comes to fleas and ticks, are they? I mean, because we one thing that someone told me is that fleas don't like sunshine. And so if you have a shady area, it's sort of avoid the shady area. Is that true? Uh, certainly true of ticks. Ticks don't like dry areas. They like it humid. And I do believe that fleas also have their preferences. But there's, you always hear people in Florida talk about sand fleas mm -hmm. or out, you know, in the sand, in the sun. Okay. So again, you're going to have some variation among the different species and strains of, of bugs. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll identify in your region what kind of area seems to be loaded with bugs. Mm -hmm. um, up here in the Northeast, you know, it's the edge of the woods where it's shady, where it's damp. I'm sorry, my dog is still jumping on the counter over <laughs> there, <coughs> watching what we're doing. Um, so, you know, it might be different in Florida or in the more Southern climes, but I think the first thing you need to do when you're figuring out how you're going to avoid these bugs 
is finding the high risk areas and simply avoiding that those type of environments. Mm -hmm. Um, and then decide, is it fleas? Is it ticks? Is it both? Yeah. You know? Right. Um, so and time of year will also, it'll yeah. change you know, spring to summer to fall. And, you know, the ticks will have their peak times and their low times. Yeah. It's so funny. One, someone told me years ago, and it's not something that I, I even considered was that, um, you know, people assume that winter time we're all safe. Mm -hmm. But sometimes eggs can be in the house and we turn on the heat and it wakes them right up. And then we end up with yeah. another infestation. Yeah. Or you go somewhere and you bring some eggs home, mm -hmm. um, you know, someplace you didn't know had flea eggs there. Yeah. So when it comes to the, you know, the topical flea and tick treatments out there, the front lines, the advantages or advantage, um, those type of brands out there, is there a place for them and can they be used safely with our pets? Um, you know, we know we're always going to have individuals who react, but by and large, things like frontline and advantage or advantix do seem to be less problematic than some of the other products out there. Um, and the beauty of the topicals is to a degree you can wash them off. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the orals, which I recommend against, it's in there, you know, once you've put it in and we don't even know how long it stays in there. So the other, the other thing is, you know, to use these products in a minimalistic way, not using it religiously every month, but really doing step one, assessing your risk, practicing avoidance, and then deciding, do I need a product? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, like you, I would advocate for the natural products first whether it be a cedar side, wonder side, essential oil type product, um, you know, use thoughtfully and well chosen. Uh, I think those can be quite effective. And I know that when it comes to, it's funny because people have um, opinions about cedar and I, my dogs don't have a problem with cedar um, beyond the fact that some, the cedar side can have a very strong scent. Mm -hmm. So for Zoe, who's very sensitive to scents, um, they all are, but Zoe seems to be especially so. I don't put cedar side on her because it just makes her miserable. Um, and that's why I like Wonder Side because they have like the lavender and the lemongrass and the rosemary, which is a lot lower in the scents. However, um, same thing with rosemary. Some dogs can react to rosemary. Some dogs can react to cedar side or to cedar side, it's a cedar. Um, right. What is going on with there? Is it just the scent or is there a potential for um, toxicity there? I would think the scent and also whatever carrier they're using. Um, <laughs> dogs, you know? Dogs. <laughs> um, and some individuals are just exquisitely sensitive to all sorts of things from essential oils to scented candles to clean cleaners and disinfectants. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's about that individual and what they can tolerate. Yeah. And I, we mentioned essential oils a few times. I want to say that I know that it's tempting to go to the grocery store and see some essential oils and pick them up and bring them home. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> Be very careful with the essential oils you bring home because like a lot of industries that have gotten popular over the years and because the pet industry has is such a, you know, a, and a, what's it, a profitable industry. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that are putting stuff out on the market that are such low quality and um, they're not testing their products or they're self-testing and saying that it's third party tested. It's just, it's shady, shady AF. So be very careful and trust the line that you go for. Oh, there goes my dogs. But oh yes, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important. And don't go for the cheap products. Um, you know, go with a trusted name. A lot of people like Animalio, mm -hmm. um, and and I wouldn't hesitate to purchase products from Dr. Shelton at yeah. all. Um, the other thing is, uh, I see the question about um, from Kendall, who has a guide dog. And if she she travels, I get the gist, she travels a lot and can't always avoid certain areas. You know, she's going to have to be vigilant. She may have to use something like an Advantix, depending on if it's fleas or ticks. 
Yeah. Both of us are doing the same thing. I have Rigo at the yeah. door barking. Yeah. Um, I don't know what is going on over there, but I feel like I need to investigate it. <laughs> well, I will tell you guys about what I'm doing while Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Goes and checks her, her dogs. But yeah. um, I am, like I said, I do, a, I alternate back and forth between Wonderside and Cedarside. I know that there was questions a couple years ago, uh, Wonderside changed an ingredient in their food or in their food, in their sprays. And people were like, oh, it's toxic to dogs now. And I spoke with the company and no, um, I don't believe that what they did makes their products toxic to dogs. I think that a product that they used to, or an ingredient they used to have was no longer available to them. So they had to find an alternative and they found the best one that was still make their product as effective. And um, I don't think it's an issue. I've been using their products for years. Um, when people say, you know, well, I've never had an issue. I think that that is valid. However, you know, we also have to remember that sometimes um, issues don't show up right away. And two, every dog is different. So while my dogs do very well on Wonderside, um, it's perfectly acceptable that other dogs may not. So you'll have to make the right choice for your dogs. But so I use those two products and I spray my dogs like once a week from spring through the fall. And I also have made my own um, essential oil sprays. And I saw that Doreen says, I use cedarwood, geranium, and clove on his collar, then use Wonderside on the yard. And I love those. And I also um, purchase, what are they called? Citronella plants and other plants that I put around our flower garden to um, warrant off fleas and ticks. And I also diffuse those scents in our home. And I use, um, which Dr. Kozier's back, I use um, uh, uh, diatomaceous earth on their bedding. And we don't have much carpet on, our dogs are only allowed on the first floor. And we don't have much carpet on the first floor, but during the spring, summer and fall, I use diatomaceous earth. I just basically sprinkle it on their bedding and on the flooring that we do have, let it sit for 30 minutes and then vacuum it up. I am not convinced that diatomaceous earth works because um, some people say it works great. Some people say they've trapped a flea into a container of diatomaceous earth and the flea was fine. Nothing happened to them. So, it, but since I've never had a flea problem, I have no idea how much of it is luck and how much of it is our, our program is working. So what are your thoughts on diatomaceous earth beyond the fact that it can be very bad to breathe in? Oh yeah, it can be really irritating. I have used it around my house and I did find it effective with some ants um, that were trying to make some inroads. Uh, you, obviously you have to put it back out after it gets rained on because mm -hmm. it gets washed away. Yeah, But it's in the environment, I think it's harmless. Um, I think it might help. There's always gonna be bugs that will get through stuff. So it's not a guarantee. Um, but I like using environmental strategies. You mentioned you plant citronella or mm -hmm. what plants did you choose? I, I do citronella. I do lavender, um, some rosemary. Chrysanthemums can be good too. What was that? Chrysanthemums. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so strategies with plants that are naturally repellent, um, keeping sunny areas. If you're interested in, a, in ticks that don't like the sun, you know, keep, your open lawn as unshaded as possible. Uh, you know, deny access to the edge of the woods if you can. Uh, keep your hedges trimmed tightly, all things that let the sun in. So that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I love and people tell me they have great results with are tick tubes, which have you encountered tick tubes yet? No. Basically what it is, is a toilet paper roll, which so save those. And some uh, cotton balls that have had permethrin flea spray put on them. And you put them out where rodents like chipmunks and mice and the like um, can get at the cotton and they take it home to their nest. And it kills the baby ticks that are floating around on the little rodent. Oh. So they never mature to become the ticks that bite our dogs. Nice. And okay. you can buy commercial ones or you can DIY. Yeah, that's really simple. You just um, have to put them in a safe place where your, your dog isn't going to get to them and along where the rodents like to go, like my fence line <laughs> or, near, or near the wood pile. 
Right. And let them kill the bugs for you. Mm -hmm. Belinda asked, how about the amber con collars? Do they work? I don't know what amber collars are. Uh, they're just what you think they are. They're actually the amber um, kind of gemstone, mm -hmm. usually in a crude form. I don't think they do squat, but I have people tell me that they work. They do. There's, there's people out there that make very attractive ones. And I like my dogs to look good, mm -hmm. but I would not count on them to repel ticks. And now this is Kathy says, and I had someone actually message me on Instagram about this, the EM collars. And I actually thought that they were like some type of um, electronic collar, like a training collar, but he was like, mm -hmm. no, um, effective microorganism collars. So what are those and do they work? I have, I have not run into them at all. Yeah, I, have I, had, I have had ones that um, supposedly emit a vibration that is annoying to the insects. Um, haven't seen, I've had people say it works. I've had people say it doesn't. I've never encountered effective microorganisms. Yeah. It's brand new to me as well. And I know, I can't remember I, when I used to go to a blogging conference every year, the last couple of years, it was hosted by Soresto. Uh-huh. Is that a flea? Soresto is the five or nine month collar. Yeah. That I've had caused seizures in dogs. Yeah. So- uh, I, and and the number of people who write me about adverse reactions to the Soresto collar is astronomical. Oh wow. Yeah. And Lisa says tick tubes made a giant difference in our yard. We were able to place them on the outside edge of the dog fence lawn area. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hi Lisa. I saw Lucy tracking. Lisa has one of my puppies. She has Puck's sister. Nice. And she also has a dog named Scheme that lived with me for a while. Um, placement of the tick tubes is key because like Doreen is saying, uh, she found the cotton in the dog's yard. Yeah. So it's going to vary if it'll work for you and where you can put it. Yeah. Them, I should say. So when it comes to um, fleas, you know, one thing that comes up a lot or um, I've heard about a lot are flea allergies. So mm -hmm. can you speak to um, what are flea allergies and you know, how do you even know that your dog has a flea allergy? Oh, you you know, because that dog um, is itching nonstop. And often there's a lot of hair loss and a secondary skin infection. Mm -hmm. It's usually over the back of the lumbar and sacral region, the, the butt. Um, and really what the reaction is, is to the saliva that the flea injects when they bite. Mm. And just like a mosquito bite on you, the bite may be there for a couple of days. Yeah. Some people really react strongly just as the dog reacts to those flea bites. Okay. And it's, it is a severe, severe itching. And if the dog is super sensitive and a lot of fleas are involved, a huge area that can develop into a hot spot, a big area of infected skin. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. So with a dog like that, you would really need something that uh, a treatment or a repellent that works. Yeah. yeah, that those sorts of dogs need um, consistent help. Yeah. And, and, so, and you may, as much as you want to avoid the chemicals like we mm -hmm. all do, you may be forced to, at least for some times of the year. And then, of course, there's the oral um flea oh, and yeah. things that yeah. are constantly being advertised ad nauseum also. Oh, and, now, and now they've come up with one that does heartworm, fleas, ticks. It, I think it even does intestinal worms. No dog needs to receive that kind of product every month, no matter where it lives. Yeah. It's just, it seems a little bit overkill. When well, you and you know, we're talking about, of course, the, the, um, Revecto, Nexgard, Simperica, Credelia, the whole family of the isoxazoline class of drugs. And that was actually, those, those products were developed as pesticides for crops, only they couldn't be used because they never broke down. They didn't go away. Mm -hmm. So they weren't safe to use on our food crops. So of course, why not give them to our dogs? and let it sit in their body for God knows how long. Yeah, that's just it, is they're not breaking down. How long is it sitting in the body and why are we doing it on a monthly basis? Well, Brevecto has a three month label. So we know Brevecto and probably the others last at least three months. 
Um, there was supposedly some company studying one that would last five. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, who knows? Uh, they all now carry a warning for causing seizures and cannot be given to epileptic dogs. It's like, so this is a drug I want to give my dog? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So for people who feel because of where they live, they have to use um, a topical treatment, you know, that's a chemical based topical treatment or even an oral treatment. Is there anything they can do to protect their dogs from the chemicals that they're exposing their dogs to? Number one, the absolute bare minimum that you need. Don't, you know, don't fall into the habit of it's the first of the month. I must dump my chemicals on my dog. Use it when you need it. Uh, try to lengthen it until, you know, the beaten between applications as much as possible. Uh, all the other things that you do with your dog, you know, your good nutrition, your clean living, all those sorts of things, of course, apply. I've never had any specific strategy for people who did Advantix or Frontline. Um, other than if it if the dog reacted to it, of course, wash and discontinue immediately. Mm -hmm. What about like adding milk thistle to the diet? Could that help like push it out um, of the system? Well, remember the topicals are staying in the skin layer. Oh, okay. They aren't really coming in. Okay. Um, and if you were using one of the orals, yeah, you know, a milk thistle might support the liver as it breaks it down, assuming it breaks it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's getting excreted in the urine, kidney support would be indicated. It's going to depend on what your product is. Right. But again, for the topicals, you know, the worst thing you pop, that you may need is some Dawn dish detergent to wash as much of it off should your dog react. Mm -hmm. Kathy here says, um, so is there anything I can do in addition to the oils besides using a chemical topical to avoid a reaction again? Um. Mm -hmm. like, like, like foods or supplements that she can add to her uh, diet. No, I always, I mean, I don't use anything on my dogs, but my dogs are raw fed, minimally vaccinated, you know, live a good lifestyle. Avoidance of the area, um, you know, being smart in the environment, uh, good grooming, all sorts of things like that, that can lessen your need for chemicals. Uh, that's about, that's about it. I don't, I don't think of any specific foods or supplements. I just think high quality caring for the dog as naturally as possible. Mm -hmm. I know one thing that I, I find is that, you know, when I first started feeding raw and we listened to the list of, you know, benefits of raw feeding. And one of the benefits is that um, our dogs won't get fleas and ticks. And of course I know plenty of people who are, raw feeders and their dogs get fleas and ticks. And sure. it's one of those where um, I believe I read it on Dr. Um, Peter Tobias's site about there's something about a high carb, high sugar diet that comes with feeding kibble that makes the blood more appealing to fleas. Can you speak to just basically the difference in diets and how? Yeah. Yeah. The, the carb content and I never really thought of it as making the blood more appealing. I think it makes the whole dog more appealing. Um, one of the things people often comment when they switch from feeding, especially a high carb corn based kibble to fresh foods is their dog no longer stinks. Mm -hmm. And anything, you know, these insects work off sensing carbon dioxide, sensing heat, sensing vibration and smell. And that dog skin, that kibble dog skin, that's producing a lot of oils, that's smelly, is going to be more attractive. And, you know, it's not that our raw fed dogs, as you said, don't get fleas and ticks. They're just not as attractive in the environment compared to kibble fed dogs. Mm -hmm. um, here's a good one. Doreen says, what do you think of using diatomaceous earth with neem and yarrow? Mm -hmm. We use that before using oils and it seemed to work too. I've had good people have good results with neem alone. Um, diatomaceous earth in the environment. I'm not big on putting diatomaceous earth on the pet because I mean, what diatomaceous earth is, is tiny little crystalline skeletons of, of ocean microorganisms. 
and they're sharp, it's spiky, they're drying. I don't think they're good on the skin, but definitely in the environment. Um, but yeah, neem is neem is a good product, and I would put it in your rotation. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, Doreen. Now it's like now I'm like, where can I get some neem? Oh, and Nate here. Hey Nate. I know. <laughs> Hi there, Nate. So when it comes, I'm trying to think of more questions to ask because it's like, this is such a great topic. Um, you know, one thing that I've noticed is that, you know, like people will take their dogs to dog parks or, you know, they're take their, basically take their dogs to places where they're going to be exposed to either other dogs or mm -hmm. bugs and stuff. Um, you know, I would think that if this is an issue, like if you have a dog that has allergies, you would also, I mean, you mentioned it a little bit, you know, try and really think of um, avoiding places where your dog is going to um, uh, come across more fleas, more ticks. What other places would you avoid? Well, ticks obviously are the biggie. And remember, avoidance actually protects you too. Um, mm -hmm. Someone mentioned earlier in the chat that their husband was very sick with a tick-borne disease. And People, people are getting Lyme, people are getting anaplasmosis or Lichia, all those sorts of things. So you want to avoid those woodsy areas, those that dense underbrush 12 to 18 inches high where the dew stays there on, for a long time. Um, you want to be more in the open field, something closer cropped uh, or closer mown, I guess would be the better term. Yeah. Um, so and... You know, it's well known like in my area, we have a beautiful area called the Pine Bush Preserve with hiking trails and stuff. And it is tick heaven. And we don't go there. Um, you know, you just, you can't because you walk in and your legs are covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy Perito. I love what she says. She's basically okay. saying she has all of it checked, raw fed, titered groom, but her dog just got a tick. And so she's like, what do we do after we remove the tick from our dogs? What should we do? Great question. Um, I clean it with a little peroxide and I just keep an eye on it. Um, there are many ways to remove a tick. There are all kinds of tools sold out there. Uh, use what works for you. Sometimes for me, it's just my fingers. Um, you know, pull slow and steady. There's one tool that you actually twist that does work well. But yeah, simple, simple, just peroxide and keep an eye on it. Puppies especially will get a big swelling at their first tick bite. Very common. Uh, older dogs tend to not do that as much. Mm -hmm. Nice. And Judy says, do nematodes really work? That's a good question. That's a, that's a good question for a gardener. Um, I have heard very good reports, but I have no personal experience with ne using nematodes. But I know um, we have a local garden store chain, and they are very big on natural methods, very big on nematodes. Mm -hmm. And they sell well, so they must work. <laughs> Amy says, how often should we do the 4DX? I don't even know what 4DX is. That, that's the snap test. Okay. Uh, as often as you want. If your dog has been bitten by a tick and you're concerned that that that, that may have been an infective bite, um, six weeks after the bite is the time to test. So I have people that test their dogs twice a year. I have a couple that test three times a year, minimum once, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Michelle says, I mean, she had the same question. And then she yeah. says, when should you treat your dog? Uh, I treat first exposure or first positive test, and I'll treat anything that looks like a relapse. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you get to know your dog and the first time they had a clinical case of Lyme, you know, for my dog Pesto, it always settled in his neck and I would notice he couldn't lift his head up. That was my clue. And he had a couple of relapses in his life after mm -hmm. the first episode. Yeah. Huh. I'm so lucky we don't have ticks. It's so funny but yeah. when you don't, like, I'm you know, I've, had, it, folks. <laughs> I've had dogs for close to 10 years. And before I got dogs, I, there's so many things I did not know. And yeah. even now, um, the idea of going through and checking each of my dogs for ticks when I come in the house is so foreign to me. I just, I wouldn't even know where to begin. 
with yeah. a tick check. And I've seen people post pictures of ticks on you know social media and they can be really tiny. Mm -hmm. So how yeah, one of the one of the tricks I've been taught when you come in from a uh, walk or hike is get one of those hair rollers that we use to take the hair off mm -hmm. and run that over your dog because many times the tick is just on the surface of the coat or just under it and you'll you'll see it on the tape. Okay. Okay. So that's an easy thing, especially with a coated dog like a golden, like my Aussies, mm -hmm. that using that tape as a, a tick attractor. Okay. Um, Kathy says, which garden center? Because she wants to get some nematodes. Um, it was, I think it was Hewitt's. Hewitt's. Yeah. Um, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Doreen says, our pup has Lyme disease twice while on chemicals mm -hmm. and not at all since using natural oh that's interesting using natural chemicals that's, that's good. good and yep. you know for different individuals different things are going to work better so you you know if what you're using isn't working try something else and then judy's like any with human de i'm not quite sure what she means but um it m reminds me to say when it comes to diatomaceous earth although Pretty much our message here is that it's, you know, don't bother with it. Um, it has to be human grade, um, food grade diatomaceous yeah. earth. Don't yeah, the grade. stuff that goes into a swimming pool. Yeah. Um, Kathy says, try a tick check on a black poodle. It's a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a challenge. And then here we go. Uh, Scott's here and he says, on the note of nasty buckers, how do you recommend dealing with high mosquito areas, Dr. Kozier? That's a good one. That's a very good one. Um, mosquitoes are tough, obviously, if you live near water. Um, you know, if you have a pond. Well, we talked about this with your place. Yeah, yeah we, we have, have four ponds. Um, you know, find natural predators, find ways to attract them. One of the things that mosquitoes are um, attracted to is carbon dioxide. And there are actually uh, devices that emit carbon dioxide and you can draw the mosquitoes away from like your picnic table. Oh, okay. I don't know if that would be practical, but let's talk about heartworm preventative for a minute because mm -hmm. my viewpoint is probably different from many in that I don't think it's all that toxic when we're talking about the monthlies. Now, remember, I grew up in the day where we only had the daily. So every day you gave your dog a dose of DEC. And if you missed one day, your dog was at risk. The monthlies are a lot better. My preference is Interceptor. I choose that because it is simple. It works on an extra stage of the life cycle of the heartworm compared to HeartGuard. So I can give it every 45 days instead of every 30. So again, using minimal drug. I can also use it at the safe heart dose. And I think we talked about this the other day, yeah. a lower dose. It's in and out of their body in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It does not stay there all month or anything like that. And you can treat seasonally. You can treat only when you have mosquitoes. Uh, we at the hospital right now have five active cases of heartworm disease that we're in the process of treating, which to me is really a large number for upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And more and more of the rescue groups are bringing dogs up from the South. So heartworm disease is spreading more. And, you know, mosquito avoidance is good, but if you've got it in your area, you may have to at least seasonally use a protective. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's we're lucky here in the Pacific Northwest because, or I should just speak to my area, Washington, Western Washington. We don't have any cases of heartworm mm -hmm. outside of dogs that were rescued and transplanted from other states. But um, I actually, there's a website, I don't know the name of it, but if you just Google heartworm map, it'll come up. And yeah. I check the map to see um, mm -hmm. what's going on. And basically, you know, our, we don't really have a humid climate, but last year was probably the first year that we started having a lot of humidity and our temperatures are getting hotter and hotter. And mm -hmm. it's one of those where, uh, it could be a concern with weather patterns. And also if there is a heartworm positive dog and, and this is what Dr. Coder said in our last live and the mosquitoes here have a taste, they're now carrying that around. 
So it doesn't take a whole lot for it to be in the area, but I haven't started giving our dogs treatment yet. Uh, it's just an open discussion that I have with our veterinarian every year. Yeah, and I have read that the average mosquito can fly two and a half miles. So if your dog gets infected here, two miles away, that mosquito population could affect another dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a huge distance in a suburban area. Yeah, it is. Um, so, okay, Judy says, have you used human grade DE directly on dog fur for ticks? And we talked about this earlier where um, it's not recommended because it's so drying onto a dog skin. And it also, if a dog breathes, breathes it in, it's very bad for their lungs. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's and it's just so irritating to the skin. I I would never use it. Yeah, and it's it's I, I have a blog post about using diatomaceous earth because I actually used to, and now that we're sheltering in place, this is a grand opportunity right. for me right. to clean. And I'm going through and just going through cabinets and cleaning stuff out, and I found that I have this huge container of diatomaceous earth that I haven't touched in so long. Because when I first used learned about it, I learned that you know not only is it great for fleas, um, ticks, but it's also great for a detox. So you can like put it in your tea and drink it, and it's a great <laughs> detox. And it has all these great benefits. It can help you lose weight. It can do all these things. And then of course, you know, you know, information gets out there. You start talking to other people, and it probably wasn't until a couple years later that I learned. Well, those are good things, not proven. Um, here are some other things that you should be aware of too. And I stop using it on my dogs and I stop adding it to my tea. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that there are just some safer, um, safer products out there that, right. um, you know, I don't, I don't, I just don't, I use it on my carpet though, but I just put the dogs outside. And so and I'll mm -hmm. use it on my carpet and let it sit for 30 minutes and then vacuum it up. But mm -hmm. otherwise, um, another thing that works, and I swear this works, Febreze. Really? You know, years ago, um, when before um, my life as a dog mom, <laughs> I was a single woman in an apartment with two cats. And I got a cat, um, Jaffrey, who's since passed. Jaffrey came to our home, or my home, littered in fleas. Oh. as a kitten and I spent time basically just picking them off one by one and because mm -hmm. when he was so little you couldn't put a flea treatment on him sure. and right. um and I got it all cleared up and I was like vacuuming every day to get all the flea eggs and then one day I was looking for something and I went underneath the bed found it reached under and I could feel like something's wrong and um, you know, a few hours later, I had a few flea bites, and oh, no. and it started again. I just basically lifted up the bed, and someone had told me about it, and I sprayed Febreze all underneath the under of my bed, all over my carpet. Never had a flea again. And wow. I swear that stuff is just mad. I know it's not healthy for our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, and so yeah. if we were to have this again, the dogs would go outside. I would even have to like have a catio area for the cat so he can go outside, mm -hmm. but I would use Febreze, it's pretty magical, which makes you kind of scary because it's like, if it can kill fleas, what are we spritzing in our air? Oh yeah. And breathing yeah. in. Yeah. And you know, we all try to be as natural as possible, but sometimes it's just not possible. Yeah. And you know, if we're 95% natural and 5% chemical, we're still so far ahead of the curve. Yeah. I think when I first started doing natural, um, I, be I belong to and work with a local rescue. And one of the volunteers told me to, because I was just like, I don't want to do the topical anymore because I started hearing bad things about it. And she said that instead of, you know, because I thought at the time that we needed it and I was terrified to not use it. And um, so she said, instead of putting one topical on each of our dogs, and at the time we had three dogs, she mm -hmm. said, split the topical between all three dogs and then use, um, make a lavender spray for the rest mm -hmm. of the time. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And it worked. And it, it was, worked. I think it was that path that got me to a point where I realized I didn't even need the topical anymore. And so I even wonder if I ever did. But again, mm -hmm. that's just because of where I live. Um, right. 
My dogs it's don't. Really different. Yeah, I don't really take my dogs to places um, other than you know our property because I have five dogs. It's too hard to control them. Mm -hmm. I don't take them to the dog park. I don't take them to the beach. I don't take them anywhere. Um, yeah. But um, so we're fortunate. But it is something to consider: is that it did work for us. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have a lot of people commenting. Yeah. Um, I, th I thought this was a really great um, message. This, Janet says, after a heartworm positive dog, I've changed my mind about prevention. And yeah. I think that that's such a great point because I think it's like, even I will say this all day long, I have been on my high horse about so many things when it comes to raising dogs mm -hmm. um, because I always can compare becoming a raw feeder as someone who stops drinking or finds Jesus or stops smoking. All of a sudden you're just like, no, this is the answer. And yeah. then you meet someone who has a dog that's allergic to all proteins or right. you, know, you right. have, there are just so many things out there and that's, that's how you learn. And it's, there was a time when I thought heartworm medication was horrible and a bad mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. until I started learning about heartworm. And now right. I just, close my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, many paths up the mountain and, you know, count your blessings because stuff is going to happen, you know, despite all your best efforts. And sometimes you need the drugs. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll try and find every other way, but sometimes you need the drugs. Oh, Nate has a really good, she, he says he saw a great live with Dr. Morgan and Ken and Kine, and they brought up mm -hmm. a great point when washing your dog, first apply um, shampoo around the tail and neck areas, preventing fleas from running and hiding in the ears and butt. Fleas definitely um, come to come up towards the head as you start working. So um, I think that's, that's a great plan of attack. I would just add to it, you know, in the bath, ears have to be cleaned. The head, the whole head has to be washed. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get every area and you do not have to use a flea shampoo. Any shampoo will wash those fleas down the drain. So don't feel like you need a chemically loaded shampoo, mm -hmm. something that lathers well and good bathing technique will do the job. And I've heard some people are use Dawn as a flea. Yeah, I, the best use for Dawn is taking off motor oil from an animal. It's a really drying product. It's not something I would use. I would use it if I had to take a topical flea and tick preventative like Advantix off mm -hmm. because you need something to get to the oily layer of the skin and remove that product. Right. But I would not be bathing in Dawn on a regular basis or for any reason other than those two things. Mm -hmm. Doreen says, what do you think of Sentinel? Sentinel is a cousin of Interceptor. It's the same active ingredient as Interceptor plus a flea control product that acts as a birth control for fleas. It sterilizes the flea. So a lot of people use it. It was one of the first flea preventatives that came out. Um, again, I'm a minimalist, so I need that flea protection. If I wanted to guarantee that a um, flea population wouldn't move into a house, Sentinel would probably be an okay choice. Because again, any flea that hops on your dog is not going to reproduce. And what many people forget is the live fleas are only about 10% of the flea population the eggs and the larva comprise the biggest um, part of the case. Mm -hmm. And that's what's in your carpets, the eggs are hatching into larva, going into pupas and then becoming adults. And one flea it lays like 10,000 eggs in a heartbeat. So killing the adults is great, but that doesn't solve the problem. You have to kill the eggs. Yeah. Um, Belinda says, bats love to eat mosquitoes. What about bat houses? I'm not a bat fan. Me either. <laughs> so um, I, I've actually had a couple of bats get in my house. And with the dogs chasing them, it was quite the circus. Um, and there I am, you know, running over to look online to see what do I do when a bat gets in my house. And all the information I could find was about building bat houses. And I'm like, I don't want to house the bats. I want them to go away. But they do eat a lot of bugs. And they are very important in our ecosystem. Um, 
And yeah, you can build bad houses and have them meet bugs. Go for it. Just not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because my veterinarian, we have the conversation about vaccinations every year. And, um, you know, rabies is not a concern in Washington state. It's not in mm -hmm. our coyote population. Mm -hmm. um, so although we still do have to vaccinate for rabies, it's one of those things where people can be like, nah, do we really? And, um, but she said one thing that people don't realize is that rabies is also in the bat population. And I went and looked it up and it's actually a very small percentage of bats that carry rabies. But the difference between like rabies and animal, other animals would be that bats, I don't know how to say the word, but basically can put it into the air rather than, it doesn't take a bat bite to transmit rabies from a bat yeah. to a dog. So if you have a bat in your home, it's just like, gosh, darn it. And, and so yeah. that was, that's the thing that would keep me from wanting to set up a bat house unless I set one up like way at the edge of our property. We're blessed to have five mm -hmm. acres. So maybe I would, maybe I'd do a bat house near the ponds and the exactly. bat can help the frogs eat the mosquitoes. The frogs can eat the larva and the bat yeah. can take care of the ones that make it out. Yeah, we have, we have, and I see my tech Abby is on. Um, we have a good bat population around here and we still have a rabies problem. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Abby and I were at the hospital last year in, I think it was January, February, middle of the day, and two women came into the office with a shopping tote with a raccoon in it. And they had picked up this raccoon at the side of the road in the middle of the day on a sleety, nasty day. And they thought he'd gotten hit by a car. He was stumbling around and how, and how they scooped this thing up and put it in a shopping tote <laughs> and brought it to the vet, I don't know, without getting bit or scratched or something. But Abby, Abby was critical in the mission to contain the raccoon. The raccoon had the dumb form of rabies. Um, there's no reason for it to have been out in the middle of the day, stumbling around by the side of a road. Yeah. Crazy. I have to yell at my dogs. <laughs> oh, welcome to the club. Okay. Thank oh, you. you're so slick with that mute button. Oh, I know. I'm right there ready for it. <laughs> yep. Yep. I Mine has settled down now that I took one out of the action. I don't know if Johan came home or if someone dropped something off. I have packages arriving like from my stock up shopping and I think I got it all, but yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Someone, uh, Tammy says, Capstar, how bad is it? Capstar, again, is in and out in 24 hours. Uh, it basically, it circulates in the blood because every flea that bites the dog and ingests some blood dies. So I don't think it's that bad, but it's a very special use kind of product. Mm -hmm. Rumors, we'll use it if we're hospitalizing a pet and we see that there's fleas on it because we have to kill those adult fleas before they jump on somebody else's pet. Yeah. Um, it's not tragic, but it's not a control method. It's an emergency Band-Aid mm -hmm. for the problem, if you will. And Abby mentions um, Two Note Hudson. It's like a- yeah. We haven't talked about that. A flea and tick spray. That. Yeah. Abby's, Abby's learning lots about natural methods. <laughs> and um, Nate says, because he's a smart ass, um, yes. the only concern in Washington state is year round rain. It doesn't mm -hmm. rain year round. <laughs> yes, it's sprinkling today. <laughs> and every time, somehow, miraculously, it's not humid. Yes, yeah, somehow, whenever I speak to Nate about Washington, it happens to be raining on the day that I'm speaking to him. And it aggravates the hell out of me because there are days when it's sunny and I just want to call him and just go, it's sunny. And, yeah. and his answer would probably be, just wait. And he's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Um. So Dr. Kozier, this is Kathy. What did you find out about getting rid of bats then? Yeah, so how did you get rid of the bat? Um, one of them crawled in something and I was able to um, <laughs> cover the end and I had it essentially in a container and I took it outside. Uh, the other one I was able to, what are you laughing at? Abby's response. Oh, she threw a jet. I, she's, yeah, they did. Two mature adult woman, women 
<laughs> picked up a rabid raccoon and drove it to the vet hospital. You can't make this stuff up. Um, Abby was very distressed because they're standing in the waiting room and the raccoon seemed to be like coming around and she was envisioning it like getting loose in the hospital, causing havoc and mayhem. <laughs> Fortunately, it did not. Um, I was more concerned that the health department didn't want to, you know, check these women out or test the raccoon. They're like, no, it's fine. There was no human contact. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, the other one I was able to herd out the sliding glass door. Um, I was advised by a family friend that the tennis racket was a good solution, but that seemed a little cruel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd probably just go stand outside because it's like, I just don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not good with, with, I'm not good with critters in the <laughs> house. I'm great with critters outside the house. I'm, I'm mad. It's magical to me, but inside the house, I'm just like, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you guys have any more questions, keep bringing them on. When it comes and you're not limited to fleas and ticks. Yes, I mean, and yeah, and keep in mind, it's like we will both be on our pages asking you guys for ideas of what we can talk about. We'll be doing these every. Um, oh, I know what we should talk about. What Remember we're talking about parsley, parsley pet, and the hair tissue oh. mineral analysis. Yes, I had occasion to speak with uh, the owner of the company, Matt Rowe, and he was willing to give anybody who wants to use the code. Healthy dog 50, $50 off HTMA testing. So you go to parsleypet.com and when you check out, use healthy dog 50 and it'll take $50 off. Also, they have a new test coming out very soon, which is a glyphosate test. Uh, it uses urine, but they can test any animal for a glyphosate level. What's and the code again? Healthy dog 50. There we go. Um, and it's uh, the glyphosate test uses urine, um, will be available soon. And the data collected is be used, being used as part of a research project with HRI. Um, so if you do the, the glyphosate test, it not only gives you information, it gives uh, the, the folks at HRI the data to write up this study. So exciting stuff. So um, she says, Kathy says, I'm assuming we wouldn't need to test if feeding raw. For glyphosate or for HTMA? Yeah. Uh, I read, I read the HTMAs and I, I, most of, I would say 80% are feeding raw or fresh cooked. And I see some very serious abnormalities in some of these uh, dogs. And of course, what people are feeding varies greatly. Um, as you know, they follow different recipes or don't follow a recipe or follow an incomplete recipe. Um, glyphosate, if there's any vegetable matter in, you know, certainly I would test. And the livestock that we're feeding in those raw foods have grazed, presumably. Mm -hmm. So I would want to know. Yeah. Plus, you're getting, you know, your dog's getting exposed in your environment, where you walk, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. The, the neighbor's lawn when they spray stuff, uh, the chemical chem lawn and the like. Um, it's it's insane. In fact, I get a postcard. One of my neighbors must contract with this service, and I'll get a postcard that like the five these five deadly chemicals are being sprayed in your neighborhood next week, just so you know. And I wanna say, no, don't do that. <laughs> no, stop. Oh, Nate has, Nate, no, this is great. Nate says, did we talk about garlic and free pre prevention methods? And I do add garlic to my dog's diet. I know that there are people, it's funny to me whenever I mention garlic, um, somebody will post, garlic is toxic. And that's all they'll <laughs> say. And it's, it's toxic at very high levels. But yeah. um, you'd be amazed at how much garlic our dogs can handle. It depends on the size of your dog. You can find the dosage um, yeah. online. Um, and I add it to their vegetable mix. So I just pureed a gazillion pounds of vegetables this weekend mm -hmm. and all of it has garlic in it. Yeah. And a lot of people will use the garlic supplements from a couple of companies. And I would say 50% of people tell me they help. Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's it's very dog dependent, but I see benefit. Um, oh, and Kathy's saying the tests again. It's the urine glyphosate test is the test that's coming out. The hair tissue mineral analysis or HTMA is the test that is here. And the website is in the comments. It's parsleypet.com. Yes, yes. I'll do the website again, pet.com. And it's healthy dog 50. Yes. There we go. So is fresh, if fresh garlic is best, how effective are these powders? Um, like I've seen people using the powder supplements and they claim, they claim good responses. Yeah. I think it's just one of those where every dog is different. Right. You no. try it. You try it. Yeah. It's just, I, I do the garlic in my dog's diet. I do fresh garlic um, because I was told that the jarred minced garlic wasn't good enough. And I was like, okay. So you I do buy a, you plant your garlic. I used to, yeah. um, if, if I can get a hold of it, it's actually kind of hard to find. Cause you know what we have here, we do have some garden places. We used to have more, but we have one garden place, but everything else is like Home Depot and Lowe's. Oh, right. They don't have, garlic. They don't have citronella either. I have to go and find citronella. I ordered garlic online. Oh, and I forget what it was a place that sold seed potatoes and they had garlic and a couple other odd things and they shipped it and it grew very well. Oh, then I will have to look for that because that yeah. is something I can do because garlic also is just great for the garden. It keeps pests away. Yeah. And it tastes good on various things. Yes. Yeah. There's that too. There's that too. <laughs> um, okay, let's see if we're keeping up with this. I know. How about amber? Yes, Julie. Yeah, we talked about amber necklaces. Can you remind people what you had to say? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't think they do squat in a nutshell. Uh, they can be very attractive, and you know, if you if you want, if you like the look, go for it. But don't expect them to repel ticks at all. Um, My computer's at nineteen percent. Uh oh. <laughs> and Nate says, what do I think about wheatgrass for dogs? Huh. Uh, benefits, are you thinking that it has a flea benefit or something yeah, else? In general. Um, so I hear that wheatgrass is supposed to be really good for humans and dogs. Yeah, I know I know it's in a lot of the juices, the commercial like green juices. Uh, so beneficial nutrients. I don't know that it's... I want to say prebiotic wise, it's pretty good in terms of nourishing the gut. Um, oh, isn't there a garlic festival in Hudson? There might be. There not might be. this year. No, not, no there's nothing. <laughs> oh my God. They shut um, down our tulip, tulip festival. Our tulip festival got postponed. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a movie with Harrison Ford where he's a reporter. And he goes, he's supposed to be going to that garlic festival. It just came to me. It's one of those, it's a perfect pandemic movie. It's probably on Netflix. Just look up the Harrison Ford ones. <laughs> All the things we're doing while we're on restriction. I know, exactly. I, I started a new blog. I'm actually going to work on finishing up the design this afternoon. You on blog mom style or just a, a post? It'll, um, it'll be a third blog. <laughs> You're insane. I know. Insane. I am. <laughs> I am insane. But hopefully it'll be, hopefully it'll, it won't be too much. But, yeah. um, well, I found that, uh, and this is totally off topic, guys, but if there are any bloggers out there, this might be good to know. Because everyone is stuck at home and no one is spending money, sites are offering amazing deals. So I was able to get a domain name plus the SSL certificate plus a year of hosting for less than $25. Oh my gosh. What? Where, wow. Wow. <laughs> so you see her reaction? Doreen, that's yes. awesome. Doreen, Doreen, you're the best. <laughs> um, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's one of those where, yeah, I couldn't pass that up. So I basically spent all day like racking my brain for an idea and I came up with one. I'm not ready to announce it just yet, yeah. but um, I'll start the blog and I'm just going to be sharing everything over on Keep the Tail Wagging because 
I can't be bothered creating another page and all that. But yeah, yeah starting that up on Wednesday night, it should be ready. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. So, so speaking of things that are ready, I have another exciting thing to share, which is, oh, uh -huh, yes, num nums. These are the treats that uh, I created with my friend, Laura Nativa. I'm sorry, that's backwards. This happens to be the beef. We have beef, salmon, and duck. And these are all, I believe they're on Amazon and they'll be on Nativo Pet. These are all made with organic, free range, healthy human quality ingredients. Uh, they have Chagas mushroom powder in them. Uh, this, the beef has bone broth in it. It's, they're meaty, they're really nice, small, ah, the camera thing is weird when you're backwards. Nice, small size for training treats. So I started working on these a year ago. They're finally here. Yeah. I got my, my sample of each just yesterday. Um, so look for Num Nums on Amazon and on Nativo Pet. Um, we're going to try to sell these largely through dog trainers and dog facilities rather than going mainstream. But of course, you know, we have to get it going. So that's why it's on Amazon right now. But it's really, it's exciting to have something with my name on it and have it be the quality that it is. That is so exciting. I, I, never, I never thought I'd be designing dog treats, but you know, then I could put all of our, all the philosophy that we share into a product that somebody can pick up off the shelf so at a fair price. I'm sharing a link to the to the training treats, and then I think is this all of her stuff? Are you just on Nativo Pet? Yeah. Well, actually, they have her her treats um, hooked up to the wrong. Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Or we'll but, just we'll link them off Amazon. Just yeah. Everybody, you know, we have to get things delivered now anyway. Right. So there's those, the num nums. But I got some of her treats a few weeks ago. Oh, the, probably the chews, the chews, yes. Um, a couple months ago, actually. Yeah. And my dogs love them. Oh, there's now yeah. everyone's really commenting. Let's see. What are people saying? Yes, Michelle, they are keto friendly. Uh huh. In fact, uh, the, the ingredients on the beef, let me just read here beef heart, beef liver, uh, dried bone broth. Um, Kale pat, dried kale powder, broccoli sprout powder, dried Brussels sprout sprout powder, and dried mushroom powder. And the mushroom is Chagas. So they are thirty five percent crude protein, thirty five percent crude fat, only five percent fiber. So a meaty cruciferous vegetable blend with mushrooms. And the other formula is very slightly. Yeah. But everybody, everybody has mushroom in it because we decided that was something we really wanted to get behind. Yeah. Here, hey, Laura. I know. Here's the other ones because I ordered the, and back in February, I ordered three bags. So there's a, you you can get all all of the, like the fish skin. Let me look. Well, I just read it to you. The um, fish skin, there's the beef, the duck, and the salmon skin. And so I just got all three. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. My dogs were huge fans. So here's the sampler. It's three big bags and it's it's nice. It's and it's nice popular. to see more um, healthy things coming on the, healthy options coming on the market for our dogs. Because, mm -hmm. you know, especially, I mean, I'm sure everyone here watching understands that, you know, you want to do the best that you can. And we, we may not be able to make our dogs, you know, a hundred, their environment and diet a hundred percent natural. That's just, uh, tall order for anybody but if you can add better things here and there it's really nice when more things are coming to the market especially in this world where natural is kind of a marketing term rather than the truth right. so right. it's nice to find a brand that you can trust and you know that you know if you guys know laura um i do Dr. Kozier does, Nate does. Um, she is kind of insane when it comes to her dogs. I'll just put it out there as one insane dog mom to another. She's kind of insane when it comes to her dogs. And she has chosen to make her life about her dogs and 
providing information and products for other pet parents. And so I truly 100% trust what she's putting out there. So yeah, it was, it was a pleasure to get that in the mail. Mm -hmm, definitely. And just, and just as another thing, um, her publicist offered to send me everything for free. And I was just like, uh, no, I went and bought it because that's how much I believe in it. I can get a whole lot of stuff for free. But when, um, when it comes to one of my friends doing something amazing, no, it's like, take my money now. I will support mm -hmm. you. And yeah, my dogs were very, very happy. Definitely. So what other questions do you guys have? So Kathy says only Amazon. Uh, is it only Amazon or is it through the site too? I think I think Laura is just setting it up on the site. Literally, uh, like I said, this arrived on my doorstep yesterday and I think Laura only got hers a few days earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, we we started working on this last year and to get the quality of ingredients that we needed took a lot of time. I mean, who knew that broccoli powder was so hard to get? Um, Isn't that, that's so crazy because it's like the things that you yeah. take for granted. I, you know, being in this world, you know, where I am as a blogger and getting to know all these people who are just doing amazing things. And I've gotten a peek behind the curtain to a lot of these businesses, whether mm -hmm. it be a veterinarian practice or a dog treat company or a raw food company. And you would not believe, you know, how hard it is to do what they're doing and the hoops that they have to jump through. And and it's astounding. And it's really made me um, appreciate what we have available to us, the fact that we have so many options available to us, because it is not um, it's not easy to do this. No, it's it's quite a challenge. And that's not even considering you know, the, the stuff around it that you have to have the bags that are correct. You have to have the design of it, the labeling, making sure it meets requirements. Yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff that we don't even think of when you're designing the product. Yeah. Um, Doreen says, um, Dr. Kozier told us when we first met her, when you know better, you do better. Wise words, because we have done better since then. And that's oh, so very true. You definitely have, Doreen. It's Absolutely. so better. And, you know, Kathy says, you know, will you sell, ah, will you sell these at the vet office one day? I don't know. Um, my vet office is a little different from many in that we don't sell a lot of food. And, you know, I work at a conventional practice, even though I do alternative type things. Uh, but it's not the typical vet office where you walk in and there's a whole counter of prescription foods. So things are ordered you know, case by case. Uh, so I probably not. But Dr. Kozier can sell it through her website because, okay. you know, okay. because we both sell things. We are both um, basically partners with Amazon. So if you buy things through our affiliate links, we get a small commission. And I bet as um, Laura's company grows and becomes more and more successful, mm -hmm. she'll have an affiliate program that we'll both join. And when you support us in that way, and thank you for those of you that do, if you go to Amazon and click through our doorway, we do get a 2% or a small commission. Doesn't cost you anything, but it pays for our websites. It pays yeah. for um, the data, the bandwidth we use. And it's bandwidth, believe me, when you saw that, she said $25, you saw my eyes light up. Because, you know, it's more like 20, 250 to get started. Yeah, it is. It's like to to do everything that we have to do. And it's just and it's one of those where I'm, I'm lucky because over the years I've done it so many times that I've learned how to do it. So I can I can set up a website in three hours and be ready to go because mm -hmm. I learned how to do it that quickly. But um the, the initial investment is always like, you better really make sure this is something you want to do. Cause it's not like you click, click, click. And then it's like, eh, I changed my mind. No, it's like, yeah. once you pay that money, you're going to do it. And so it's just, uh, is yeah. So yeah, $25 is awesome. Yes. Um, Tammy says, does giving apple cider vinegar help with free flea repellent? I don't think so. Um, but your mileage may vary. 
I do think it can be beneficial, and especially if you're using the the natural unfiltered. I think Bragg's is one of the common brands. Mm -hmm. um, there is benefit to feeding that and drinking it yourself if you can choke it down, um, hide it in something, whatever. I hide it in juice. Pineapple is that how you juice is the best. <laughs> it 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 covers the taste a little bit. Yeah. But no, there are there are a lot of health benefits. Yeah. Well, the better vinegar. And Doreen has a great suggestions. Plus, it is helpful to have all the products in one place that you recommend. Yes. Yeah. Many people have a, a, a recommended products page on their website where it's like, this is what I recommend. I used to, I no longer anymore. Because yeah. my mind changes too much to keep up with. Yeah, you have to keep it up. <laughs> the other thing I like about Amazon, even if I'm going to buy the product someplace else, they're so useful for people's reviews and experiences. Yeah. And yeah, you have to read it with a bit of care because some of those reviews are paid. Some of them are just dumb. You know, the product arrived broken and the pe person gives it a one-star review. It's like, well, that was the shipper's fault, not the manufacturer. Exactly. But I, I often get a lot of good information from the Amazon reviews. I agree. I agree. Nate yeah. chokes it down every night before bed. Oh, you are you are a strong man, Nate. Yeah, Sue says water with honey. And that's what I, that's how I started was water, warm water with honey. And now um, I I do it usually with tea, but now I switched over to kombucha, even though mm -hmm. they don't have the same benefits, but I like kombucha better. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it is 12, 18, you guys. We've been on here for over an hour. I think yeah. that's enough. I think we guys, covered it. So much for tuning in. Um, we mm -hmm. need more ideas on what we're gonna talk about the next time yeah. around. Yeah, um, Dr. Coger and I are going to alternate between my page and her page, and we're just going to go back and forth during this time when we're all sheltering in place and um, just start talking about topics. And, you know, thank you guys for joining in with all your comments. And and I love that we pretty much went off without a hitch this time. Yeah, so, technology is cooperating. <laughs> so that was really exciting. And I know that... B Live said that I could do something, but I don't remember what they said I can do. I think they were giving us some type of discount to share on the screen, but I don't know where that went. Um, there's a few things like a lot of people are um, talking about apple cider vinegar right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, I I I was told that apple cider vinegar was great for alleviating perimenopausal symptoms. Liars, liars. <laughs> just. Put that out there. Okay. <laughs> so you guys have a fantastic, uh, is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. And we will talk to you guys next time. Stay tuned for another announcement of when we're going to go live again. Take care, guys. All righty. All right.